the dysgraphia. Can you explain that to the um, the parents? Because some people might not know what it is. Of course. So um, when 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 you learn to write and you see a letter in your mind, a, a typical brain will look at that and be able to copy what that letter looks like mm -hmm. the way they see it on a piece of paper. Somebody with dysgraphia, it's almost like what translates in their brain is, is the mirror image of the, of the letter. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes you will see that unlike dyslexia, where the letters themselves can be switched mm -hmm. in dysgraphia, the, the 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 letters look like they've been flipped. Yeah, I haven't really spoken too much about um those type of uh differences in 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 learning for our kids, but it's something that's really pervasive. And the thing is, with as a special education teacher, you don't really get trained on how to work with children that have dysgraphia or dyscalculia or that they ha there are dyslexic. So a lot of the solutions, the teachers have to kind of go off on their own and figure it out because like as part of regular teacher training, we weren't really like we know what it is, but we weren't taught on how to work with children in our classrooms that present those um, deficiencies. They are the more common than most people realize. Mm -hmm. um, and and with them, while it makes something in dysgraphia's case, like writing a challenge, it comes with incredible spatial um, skills. And, and I like to kind of bucket dyslexia, dysgraphia um, in, in a similar kind of bucket in terms of learning differences in the way your brain is structured. And, and people with dyslexia have unbelievable abilities for spatial recognition. There was actually a study done at Harvard last year where they looked at a bunch of astrophysicists and they took a group that had dyslexia or dysgraphia or one of those types of learning differences. And then they took another group that had typical kind of brains, for lack mm -hmm. of a better word. And they showed them images of black holes and said, identify where the black holes are. And th th these were PhDs at Harvard, right, with, with this skill set. And the, the ones with the dyslexia, the dysgraphia, were able to do it significantly more than the ones with the typical brains because wow. that is a strength that their brain has, right? Yeah. And so while it may mean that reading a book in a traditional style or writing in a traditional way is a challenge, it doesn't mean that these brains don't bring incredible gifts. And one of the cool things that, that my son's third grade teacher does is she lets him use kind of um, the function on, on Google Docs that lets him talk through his stories, right? Exactly. And so, so then he can focus on the words he wants to use instead of all the effort it takes to write it down on a piece of paper. Because at the end of the day, we're not grading penmanship. I don't care what your letters look like. I just want to know no. that you can tell a story and that you're That's able right. to communicate those things and put them down on paper and like formulate this idea and get it down, you know, and really present it in a way that is engaging for the audience. So that was like one of my go-to um, go uh, uh, solutions for the kids that I had that had um, learning difficulties with respect to dyslexia and just, I think one of my kids was actually had this question. Sure. Um, there's really nothing that is provided by the Department of Education to assist those children. But yeah, definitely the voice to text. That was like a game Amazing. changer. Yeah, that and then um, the, the, the reader on, on the... Um, on the iPad, because my school had one-to-one -one iPads in the in the building. So the reader on the iPad for the kids so that they can read it. And then the good thing about it, especially when it, um you put it with the dyslexic setting, it'll highlight every word for them so that they know exactly what that word looks like and what it says. So it's it's really interesting. And I love like the advances in, in uh, uh, assistive technology that we've had in the past, I want to say, 10 years. Um, 
in general. Who so- cares, right? Like in my mind for reading, I don't care how the word gets in to the brain, right? Mm-hmm. It can go in through your fingers. It can go in through your ears. It can go in through your eyes. As long as it gets into your mind and then you yes. process it and do something with it, that's the that's the power of the word, right? It's not yeah. the actual kind of getting it from point A to point B. I love that. Um, so, yeah, like I, I love using assistive technology and helping my students learn in whatever way they can. Like, like in I, general, the education in the United States – they're so heavy on testing. And I honestly have created ways to assess my students that don't necessarily have to be pen and paper. Like, we're going to do a project and you're going to show me that you learned what I taught you in a different way. And that's okay. And that's still valid. You know, like, it doesn't need to be traditional. Like, the, the, the systems of education that have been in place since the 1800s are no longer serving our children. So why not, you know, no, revolutionize it and change serve, it? I don't think they serve any of them, right? Yeah, no. Neurodivergent, neurotypical, sitting there and taking a three-hour standardized test doesn't help anybody. It, doesn't, it, just, it just shows that you're good at of regurgitating information. It, that's all it shows. Right. It doesn't show that you're actually learning what you're learning. It's really just like remembering facts and putting them back out. Um, um and I think also giving him that diagnosis helped explain his difference. Mm-hmm. And I, every parent does it differently. But as soon as my kids got diagnosed, I was very open with them about what they had. When my my oldest son knew, we didn't use the word autism right away because he was like two when he got the diagnosis. What's he going to understand about that? But we used to tell him he had a special brain. Right. And that his special brain made some things hard and some things easy. And we used to talk about his special brain. And then, you know, by the time he was in kindergarten, he knew uh, about his autism. And we would share with him people in history who we think were autistic and all the great things they did so that he Mm -hmm. would feel proud about his difference. And and for us, it's always believe that you have to focus on all the positive things that your child can do. Mm -hmm. Because if you focus on all the positive things that your child can do, your child will start seeing them and the rest of the world will start seeing them. But as a parent, it is my job to keep reminding him about how wonderful he is and all the great things that he brings. Mom, just one more thing from the store, please.